welcome back. You are cooking with Sheila in the Gangsta Goodies Kitchen. I have a very special guest today. Uh, can you tell everyone your name? Yes, my name is Jordan Williams, and I have the privilege of owning Keith Cravat. Mm, Keith Cravat. Yes. Now, uh, tell us, what, is that, what does that mean? Just real briefly, what does that mean? Okay, so Keith means noble, gentle, lovable, and handsome, and then Cravat means neckwear. So essentially, it's about a gentleman who is tying together his nobility, his handsomeness, his gentleness when he wears a Keith Cravat bow tie. And the uh, acronyms of Keith Cravat is KC, which is a reflection <laughs> of Kansas City, love where it. this is hosted at, right? So love, it. It. Yeah. love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, my God. So that's kind of like a, a gangster goddess. Really? Can yes. You, can you tell me more about that? Absolutely. <laughs> Thought she'd never ask. <laughs> Right, right. So, a gangster goddess is a noun, okay? Mm -hmm. Just so we want people to be clear about that. It's a noun. And so, a gangster goddess is a woman who refuses to accept mediocrity mm -hmm. as if it is her final destination. Oh, wow. While possessing a unique combination of beauty, okay, brains, and spirituality. What about foods? Well, that's all in there. <laughs> you know, but that's what a gangster goddess yes, is. No, yes. So she gets she has all of that. I respect that. So, so you get it. We need to find the Keith Cravat man and the gangster goddess. Where they are? They're gonna be here at the show, right? Yes. Okay, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I love it. So tell everyone what you are going to show us how to make today. Okay, so I'm a busy man, I'm an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. I meal prep. If I don't meal prep, I will not eat. I literally will not eat. I will not eat out. Yes. I really like Chipotle, but I, I got tired of giving them my money. So yes. I learned how to do the burrito bowls. My girlfriend actually taught me how to do it. Awesome. So we're going to make burrito bowls. What's your some, girlfriend's name? Her name is Ashton. I love Shout out to Ashton. That's yes. how we take care of them, right, boo? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so she educated me on how to make this dish. It's some beans. It got some uh, corn, turkey, ground turkey. Okay. You want to be lean, fresh peppers, and some limes. It's okay. a pretty good meal. Okay, sounds good. So let's... uh. Turn fire on your up. heat. Let's fire it up. Let's do it. Go all the way till you hear a click. Uh oh, I think the fire is about to start. Oh. Yeah, till you hear a click. Yep, I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turn that down for you a little bit. Okay, so when it starts getting hot, you can do your thing. Okay, and so, good. Um, so you're gonna put all that in there. Well, yeah. So um, I like to start with the turkey. Okay. So this is the turkey right here. You just toss it in here. You need a, a utensil. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, don't do it with your hand. I guess it wasn't hot enough, but. Well, I guess it'll warm up, but. It will. There it goes. Stop. That's with the turkey and the meat. So making sure you get the turkey right and brown. We already kind of prepared it, if you, as you can tell. So yes. once the meat is a little brown, you'll be able to go ahead and add your other things in there. But we have a sauce too. But the secret sauce, I can't really share that. I think yes. that's too much detail. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. You're not going to tell them the <laughs> I'm secret not gonna sauce. Okay. It's a secret sauce that goes with it. But ah, okay. it sets off the. Uh, the taste. Okay, that's where your flavor taste. comes from. Exactly, the flavor. Okay, all right, I get yeah. it, okay. And so then you've got your ground turkey, so what are you gonna add next? Well, typically after that you add the sauce, which you guys would not know about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after the sauce, you'll baste that, and then we'll take that off the uh, off the burner, then we'll fry the peppers. Ah, okay, yeah. got it, Should I take it, them off, put it back in the bowl, yes, what do you think? Yes, absolutely, okay, yes, you yeah. can do that. And then simply just taking the peppers, fresh cut peppers. You can get these at any grocery store, obviously. Cut them up really nice and neat. Okay. I and mean, you have you red, go. green, yellow, does it red, matter? Red, green, yellow. I like red and green. Me uh, too, yes. The yellow ones cost a little much, so okay. I just do these two. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Now, what are you gonna do with the peas and the corn? Do you put that in on the back end? So, you know, okay, so let me tell you, it's fun story behind this. So my girlfriend's preparing this meal and she literally put the peas and corn in the microwave. I was like, girl, what is you doing? <laughs> Where I'm from, you supposed to put them bad boys in the oven. I mean, on the oven with a little water, a little salt and pepper, let it simmer. Right. <laughs> so I was like, what are you doing? Ashley, I know you're going to kill me for this. But I was embarrassed that she was even doing it. And then she was like, babe, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. And I was just like, no, my mom would not be happy if she knew that I had warmed up some corn out of a can. Right. So that so, ain't how we do it. However, she, I, I guess I just underestimated. I just, that's just how I was brought up. So typically it depends if you got a preference. Yes. I mean, yes. I was, I was very afraid of doing that, but yes. it's good. I mean, at the end of the day, I meal prep. So when I cook this meal, it's typically for like six days straight. 
Got it. And I have one cheat day. And so with that being said, I'll just literally take out the corn. You got to take out the can, wash it. After you wash it, just throw it in a bowl and meal prep and, and then warm it up. And it, it really tastes the same, which is very yes. odd to me. It don't yes. taste like some sweet corn, but right. it tastes like corn for, you know, a little Mexican dish. Okay. So after that, you would let this simmer. You take these out. Um, once these are done, you know, get them a little brown, if you will. Um, I'll put these back in there. And then you'll just warm up the actual corn. You'll do the same thing with the peas or if you want to do beans. Really up to you what you okay. prefer, okay. you know. Got it. Got and then it. you'll top it off with some lime, you know, squeeze that over that. Mm. But I'm sure we'll give them a uh, yeah. good presentation. Yeah, and I guess what, I, and I get a chance to taste y'all. Yes. Okay, so I cannot <laughs> wait. So when we come right back, we get a chance to taste. I get a chance to taste, and then we're going to yes. talk. Uh, more and learn more about Jordan. Yes, and, and yes, there and we taste the goodies because I want no more. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> we'll be right back, y'all. It's grilling season, y'all. Today's segment of Gangster Goodies Kitchen has been brought to you by Kansas City style barbecue guru Mike P. Get your sauces and rubs today. Check out your local grocer or go online at www.mikepskc.com. Order yours today. Unemployment is fire, make me feel like a boss. I need all of the flavors, don't care how much it costs. It's finger licking good, make me say, huh, Ricky Ross. y'all we are back and i get a chance to taste jordan's burrito bowl yes I'm okay excited. me too because you know what i haven't eaten since like about 11 o'clock today so oh, we're on the same page we're on the same You're page going off water right now. yes okay, absolutely good, good, good. let's do this let's do okay it. so let me hold it up so you guys can kind of see it a little bit so it has some pigeon peas. Yes. Y'all know what a pigeon is? Yeah. Okay, you got some fajitas. <laughs> well, it's not fajitas, but it's like uh, fried peppers, if you will. Kind yes. of like a style to it. Yes. And then we got some fresh corn. And then underneath that is laid under some uh, ground turkey. Ah. And if you might want ground beef, you don't want to do lean, you can do ground beef or chicken. Or chicken. Or okay. Okay. So the meat is under there. The so you've under got there. it all here. Yep. And then we've got some tortillas and some... A salsa. It's a peach salsa. Mm. Uh, Trader Joe's. I really like that store. Okay. Yeah, yeah we do too. Good. Yes. So I'm going to get a little bit. So, ooh, look at this. <gasps> Look at that, y'all. You see that smoke? Look at that. <laughs> yes. I like that. Look at you, Jordan. Now, again, I learned this from my girlfriend. So I got it. If you don't like it, you really don't like her food. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm going to help myself, too. Yes. Let me get some chips. Okay, y'all. I get a chance Now, to I'm going to tell y'all, just like I told her a few seconds ago, I'm a messy eater, so... If you are judging me, then that is on you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge around here, do we, y'all? Amen. Amen. <laughs> what you think? Mm. Is it good? Did you get some salsa? Mm -mm, I'm going to put some salsa on there. Did I you get a lime? I wanted to take, no. You must be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so lime. I need to put a lime on it. Yeah, squeeze just squeeze a little lime on it. It just okay. sets it off. It gives it a little tangy taste. Okay. All right. Y'all see that? Yeah, I like that little stuff. Look at there. It's the detail of it all. I love it. Okay, now try it. So, it, now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, y'all. Hey, y'all. I really like that. That is so cool. <laughs> that is the coolest part of everything that you're doing. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> Mmm. It's pretty good. It is very good. And yeah. that squeeze of lime juice, yeah, you're right. Just set it off a little bit. It does. Okay, let me put some. Oh my God, y'all, this is fire. That's what we say in the Gangster Goodies Kitchen. Fire, yes. Uh, little... Fire. Oh, fire. Yeah, S I Y A H. Oh, you got a stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, y'all. I'm going to take one more taste and then we're going to talk more to Jordan about uh, his business and the evolution of his business, right. family and food, what it means to him. Yeah. Let's do it. Mmm. Mmm. It's pretty good. 
that peach salsa. That's pretty good. That is awesome yeah, with I'm that. Sure oh that. my God, y'all. I love it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm gonna try to stop eating so that you know we can. Uh... Does that mean I gotta stop eating? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, right? Just four minutes in between. Don't forget your water. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, uh, Jordan, one of the things that um, we believe in the Gangster Goodies Kitchen is that uh, there is that the role that family and food mm -hmm. plays, you know, on our lives, you know. And it's an important part of, you know, family and tradition and bonding and relationship building and lessons learned. Yeah. And I always ask my guests to share one of their favorite or most memorable uh, memories about food, you know, mm -hmm. and family, you know, when you were growing up or maybe something that just recently happened yeah. or. Um, I would say when I was growing up, my grandmother, she would make the best banana pudding. Shut up. And, uh, and the best part about it was mm -hmm. I got to lick the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so when it was all like she didn't, you know, she had got a little pudding and she would, you know, and I would help too. Like mm -hmm. she didn't let me like do anything. I had like she had she didn't she didn't like laying the bananas down. So I would do that part. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't really see it. I always wanted to do the topping, but she would never let me finish mm -hmm. it. No. But anyway, so I would put bananas down, and then my treat at the end of that was the uh, the pudding that was left in the bowl mm -hmm. that she didn't couldn't really get. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the best part. I think for me growing up having that family childhood, I remember that vaguely. Like I can remember the taste, mm -hmm. and it's so good. Mm -hmm. um, she mm -hmm. actually just made a banana pudding uh, not too long ago. But I didn't have the bowl, so oh. it wasn't that good. It wasn't the same. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was good. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Asking. Yes. You know, food, you know, has a way of bringing people together, you know. And so um, tell us a little bit about uh, your business. And uh, I know when I came uh, across your profile and I was like, Oh my God, look at there. Thank you. Yes. And so uh, just, you know, sh tell us, tell us about uh, your business. Yeah. So starting with the name. So yeah, Keith Kravat. Keith means noble, gentle, lovable, and handsome. Uh, and Kravat means neckwear. So uh, it's all about a gentleman who is tying together uh, those qualities, his characteristics. So when he puts on that tie, it comes with some type of um, feeling, you know? Love it. Love it. Love so <clears throat> I started the company back in uh, 2013. Okay. Uh, when I started the company, I literally had a um, a hot glue gun, mm -hmm. a hand sewing kit that I found out of my mom's room. Um, I went to a, uh, a Savers, a secondhand thrift store. Mm -hmm. Went to Savers. I told the people I needed some uh, neckties. And now when I started my company, I only had, I didn't have any money when I started my company. I dropped out of college. I was in Chicago. Came back to Kansas City, did not want to be in Kansas City, but I figured if I'm going to be here, then I'm going to grow here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just position mm -hmm. myself and I'm going to just make it what it is because clearly Absolutely. I wasn't called to any other city but this one. Absolutely. I so, hear you, honey. So you get it. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, I went to the local thrift store savers. I told them, I said, look, I got $10. And what I would do was I would take neckties and turn them into bow ties. So I needed neckties. Mm -hmm. So the neckties were my fabric. Mm. Now, mind you, when I started this company, I didn't know what fabric was. I didn't know what a pattern was. I didn't know what thread, needles, bobbins. I didn't know any of that. I really didn't. Um, wow. I was very clueless, very just like, wow, wait, this is a pattern? Like, this shirt has a pattern? <laughs> I didn't know that. I, oh, I had no. no idea. I never went to school for design or anything of that nature. When okay. I was in school, I was studying photography. Okay. Uh, but anywho, so when I got back home, I went to that store. I said, look, I got 10 bucks. I said, look, your ties are like $4 a piece. Mm. Um, and I was like, I got to negotiate you. Like, look, all I got is $10. This is what I'm doing. I want to make bow ties out of these neckties. Use this as my fabric. And so the uh, the young lady at the register, she called her manager and he said that um, uh, we got a ton of boxes in the back. I'll bring you one up. Mind you, I only had 10 bucks. So she rung me up for like nine bucks and with tax, it was like 986. I'll never forget it. So I actually had some change that came back to me, but I just tipped them. <laughs> Love it. But uh, make a long story short, took that box uh, and literally the rest was history. I went in there, man, I found so many old neck. I mean, these mm. neckties were literally from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. They were just completely old. And so when I, when I, when I took it, I literally 
cut the fabric, turned it into a bow tie shape. The mm-hmm. bad boys is a mess. I don't mm. understand how people even bought it. Wow. But they were terrible. I mean, and I had hot glue, like literally. So I had bought some Velcro. And so Look I would take you. I would take the bow tie, I mean the bigger piece of the necktie, uh-huh. that would be the bow. I would turn that into a bow. The neck piece that wrap around that little thin piece on mm-hmm. neck time, that was the piece that held it together. So I would sew that bad boy on there, throw some Velcro, hot glue it, and then bam, you had a whole bow tie. And it was crazy because I did a show. How clever. And people really were like, what is that? Like, where did you get that? Because it was wow. nothing, nothing you've never seen before, at least mm-hmm. in Kansas City, you know, mm-hmm. in the sight of what fashion looked like then versus mm-hmm. now, it's mm-hmm. completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's evolved, and I was able to be a part of that evolution of our fashion scene, but... That's how it got started. Literally just did not want to be here. Uh, I said, okay, well, let me just figure out something. And it became love it. a trail. Like, I literally created a trail behind I love Bill it. Pro bow ties. Love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love you. it. Now, one of the things I saw in your uh, profile is that you are a men's formal wear stylist. Mm-hmm. So, tell us about that. So, this is really good. It is very good. I can see. You want some more? Yes, I do. Look, I'm like, that's why I'm asking you a question, so now I get a chance to eat. Oh, okay. I see. see? It's an exchange. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure the viewers know how this works. Yes. Okay, so... um, so since then, started as a bow tie company, I got into the fashion industry and I realized, like, okay, what can I do to penetrate the market in menswear when it comes to Kansas City? Mm. It's the... To give respect and credit where it's due, there are several gentlemen and there's several business owners who have menswear store in Kansas City. Um, however, the the evolution of fashion and how we're evolving as menswear, mm-hmm. it hasn't really erupted the Kansas City fashion mm-hmm. menswear scene. And so I want to take this um, opportunity through my business to reposition what mm-hmm. menswear looks like. How do we uh, marry the casual wear with the uh, formal wear? Yes. What does that look what like? What does that look like? Through yes. the lens of Keep Cravat and through our, our client. Love it. Um, and so that concept has evolved. A lot of my clientele comes out of weddings. That's mm-hmm. been like my number one uh, driver as far as capital goes uh, when it comes to my Love client it. profile. Mm-hmm. Weddings is fun because, you know, they, they know what they want. They know the colors. They, you know, everything. And so I partnered yes. up with select designers. So my, my goal is is to carry designers that you can possibly get out of Kansas City. Mm. So one is Miguel Wilson. He's based out of Atlanta. Beautiful designer. So I carry his product here. Mm-hmm. Um, another one I partnered with, Todd's Clother. He's local. So mm. I have a price point that meets mm-hmm. every client. Mm-hmm. I got three different guys. I got the guy who knows nothing about menswear. Then you got Love the guy it. who think he knows something, but really right. don't. Really got, don't. <laughs> really don't. And then you got the guy that's like, "Don't tell me what it right. is. What it is." You know? Right. And that right. happens all the time. So I have to meet those guys where they at uh, when it comes to the ticket price. Absolutely. So I have a price point for uh, not necessarily the low end, but just more affordable. Absolutely. And then uh, more of a, I want to, I want to test it. I wouldn't mind yes. spending a couple extra dollars. Absolutely. And then I got the person that's just whatever. Yes. They literally, they literally have a style budget on their budget sheet. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Or styling. Yes, so, yes. yes. So, yeah. yes. That's where it says, going into the menswear industry, we're just going to penetrate that market and really position uh, the menswear market in Kansas City like never before. So it's this plan is rolling out. So As I told excited. you earlier, my fiscal yes. year starts in July. Yes. So we're rolling into a whole new year. So I'm excited. That is awesome. Yeah, Watch you. out, <laughs> Kansas City. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank How you. exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yes, yes. Now... Um, I was going to ask you, Jordan, so, um, where do, and people often ask, ask me this sometimes. And so, you know, I bring it back to some of my guests. So as you look at your brand, as you continue to grow your brand, how do you see, or where do you see your brand in three years or five years? Three years. I don't even know what happened three days ago. So that's <laughs> another question. <laughs> um, three years from now. I really, you know, we in 18th and Vine. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really interested in positioning my company in the 18th and Vine district. I really, um, I've been doing research about the district and the history behind it. I've heard so many stories. I don't know what yes. to believe at this point. Yes. But what I do know is that today it is this, um, 
there's something different that's shifting in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There is something mm -hmm. that is taking over in the culture. Yes. And so I really want to be a part of that conversation. Um, I built my brand and I've, I've learned that clients can go anywhere in the world to get a bow tie. Yes. They can go anywhere to get a suit. But what they're motivated by Keith Kravat, they're motivated by either me, they're motivated by the product, the story. Yes. So with that in mind, yes. I have to position my company where people can be inspired. I'm inspired by Absolutely. this history. I've seen yes. it just evolve just in yes. like to the last maybe two years, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, and so just seeing that is really inspiring for me. So I imagine a showroom store. Now this showroom ain't for everybody. Let me just be very I clear. get it. Okay. I get it. It's not for everybody. I get it. Tell the truth. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, I want to create an experience for men um, that is uh, Unique. I feel like I'm giving too many details, but I'll say this. It's a unique experience for men, uh, very matchless. You won't get this anywhere else unless mm -hmm. you're a key provide gentleman. Again, it goes back to the characteristics that he possessed. And so creating a space for men like that to thrive in. Yeah, you get it, gangsta goddess. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah, I so, love it. Yes. So that I imagine a showroom in 18th and Vaughn district, uh, very exclusive, very high end. You can only get select pieces that are carried from across the world, but right here in Kansas City through Cube Provide. I'm building those relationships. Love it, love it. And a team staff, I need to hire people. See? I just brought in two new people on my team, mm -hmm. which is, oh, they're God's saying. I'm trying See? to tell you, thank God for them. Shout out to See? Quentin and uh, Nicole. <laughs> hey, Quentin and Nicole. Yes, it is, yes. Uh, it, building that team is critical. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, and I say to people all the time, you know, Steve Jobs mm -hmm. did not bring Apple back on the brinks by himself. He sure did. He hired a, an amazing team to make that shit happen. A marketing company. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, the yes, yes. Really well. absolutely, absolutely. And so, um, just a little bit about 18th and Vine. So, and I've shared with the viewers that <clears throat> the studio is in my home, which happens to be in the 18th and Vine Jazz District. I've been in this district for 19 years. Wow. So I can so tell you, you see that so I see it, and there's been two since I've been here. Two this what? is This is the second rebirth. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, how do you feel about this, it? This, um, it I guess that's is. Where you're going. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is, of course, living in this district. There are things that I see that maybe, and for so long, because I've lived here for so long, mm -hmm. that maybe others may not see. So, this is a awesome neighborhood. It is, and it was historically the heart of black culture in Kansas City. Mm -hmm, sure. And so your vision for your brand here, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Perfect location. Thank you. Why not? Yeah. Perfect location for the Gangster Goodies Kitchen Studio. Yes, with the goddess. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Why not? You yeah. know, and so um, it is, you know, as we build those brands mm -hmm. and make those collaborations and, exactly. and bring that back to our culture, our community, our district. Exactly. You know, now of course we can't do it alone. Yeah. And I'm we and you. we know that and we understand that. We need our friends and our supporters and mm -hmm. those who believe in us, you know, no matter who they are or where they are, mm -hmm. you know, uh to you know to you know Engage see the with vision. Us, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Stand, behind us, stand with us, walk with us. Absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. And so I am so I don't even know you, but I'm so proud oh, of you. Thank you. I love it. Thank so you. so proud. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank you again for sharing your time, sharing yes. your story, and we will put all of your social media information up, yes, your website you. up. So Gangster Goodies family, y'all go follow this young man thank and. You. Um, you know, it's awesome. It. Tell them again the name of your business yes, and what it means. It's called Keith Cravat. And again, that is about a gentleman who is noble, handsome, lovable, and I forgot the word. I've been doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is at this point. Remember, because he has said it three times because yeah, yeah, yeah. we want people to remember that. Yeah, you know? yeah so, follow on Instagram. That's where the stories can be told at, uh, at Keith Cravat. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Thank you for having me. Yes. This is an honor. I'm excited to see how this evolves and to be a part of the conversation as you yes. continue to develop. It's thank an honor. You. So thank you. Thank you so yes. much. I might need a bow tie for something. Yeah, I have you to do. come on down to your for those, uh, store on 18th and Vine. Your yeah. boutique and give me a cute. Um, Amen. Speaking to yes. existence. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Peace out, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.